Welcome. My name is Samuel Nixon, Jr., an alum of the MIT Gospel Choir. Did you know that Black students at MIT have traditionally relied on faith and music for spiritual sustenance through the academic and social pressures of life at the Institute? Yeah. The MIT Gospel Choir is a half century year old example of this tradition and meaningful reliance. And from its early formation in 1971 by others, this body of faithful students has grown from the informal original group of 10 undergraduates who, quote unquote, simply enjoyed singing to each other, according to the then president and co-director, Ricardo Hall, to a more formal and amazing group of songsters from all walks of life. Choir members have been singing traditional gospel, hymns, and spirituals for around five decades in local churches, in the Christian fellowship services at the MIT chapel, and all around the Boston, Cambridge area and beyond. Today, during this holy season, a segment of the MIT Gospel Choir alums from across the years are privileged to present to you just a few moments of joy and celebration of some of the historic journey of this legacy choir. Won't you pause with us now to remember some of the singing, fellowship, and exciting moments of sharing the gospel and song in this special MIT Gospel Choir holiday presentation. It's our joy to share with you, with each musical note and chord, amidst the hustle and bustle of the season. Yeah, we know, we know. Come, relax, and spend a few moments with us as you hear the sweetness of song, the melodies of memorable moments, and voices of faith of expressed during our student years. Yes, even around the corridors of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Welcome. Gospel Choir.
My name is May White Wesson. I was a member of the MIT class of 1975 and I graduated with a degree in course seven. I was a member of the MIT Gospel Choir from its inception until my graduation. I joined the choir because I love to sing. I had always been a member of whatever choir was age appropriate for me from my childhood uh, until my graduation. I enjoyed being in the choir, sharing time with other black students at MIT because at that time there were not many of us. My class had 45 or 47 black students in a, a class of about a thousand. So it was quite a culture shock. I had not gone to an integrated school before my appearance in Cambridge. So participating in the choir gave me a sense of continuity. It gave me a system of support. It gave me time spent in something that I was familiar with. I think the importance of the choir was that it showed that MIT was changing a bit. There was some attempt at diversity, at least as far as admitting black students to the ranks. Uh, I think we made a big impression on the campus and also in the greater Boston, Cambridge community. We had concerts, we had programs, we um, sang in the Great Hall. It was a joyous time and experience. Hello, this is Michael Dixon. Um, I was at MIT from 1984 to 1988. And I was a bass in the gospel choir, sometimes a tenor, and they forced me to. Um, I just wanted to explain why the gospel choir was so near and dear to my heart during my time at MIT. It was also one of the best support activities that I was able to be a part of and a privilege, I had a privilege to participate in. Um, there were a lot of great friends, a lot of great challenges that we faced together, and those things have impacted me to this day. As far as memories go, I wanted just to just remember the times that we sang in Kresge with the New Jersey Mass Choir. Um, there was an awesome poster that went along with that that um, concert. That was the one that was very colorful. Um, it was just a blessing to be a part of that piece. Um, I remember the times that we um, able to connect with people like Phillips Bryant, who was who sang "Going Up Yonder." It's one of those songs we always used to love to sing. Um, she was our Aretha Franklin. She was a powerful voice. Um, I also remember um, singing some original songs from Daryl Gaskin, Daryl the Roof is on Fire Gaskin. Um, I remember singing Psalms 150, um, I'm Saved by Grace. So one of my favorites was 2000 years ago. Awesome. We sang some more original songs from Tyrone Williams. Um, I remember having Easter service um, at Kresge. Um, with St. Paul's AME, um, and I remember, you know, being able to go into the organ and hear it play at Kresge. Um, I remember doing a tour when we went to um, tour the East Coast. Um, it was a blessing, but, you know, one of the years we were did, did the tour was during the Challenger explosion, uh, where we lost Ron McNair and a few other astronauts. Um, Ron McNair was at my T physics major in grad school and he was known by many of the people we were actually going to visit so it was a really solemn time um we also sang let mount zion rejoice um and we dedicated that song during the tour but also we sang it um with the dedication of the building ron mcnair building as well um i remember connecting with people such as my wife <laughs> crystal dixon who um it was a pleasure to, to work with and to be able to interact with and so many other people. It was just an awesome thing. But some people stick out, like, for example, China Altman, um, who was a, just a courageous woman who was part of the uh, um, media at MIT. And she used to want to help us get those posters done, amongst other things. But um, she was just a blessing. And um, just to see how she was a benefit to us. And we, I think, impacted her as well.
ready for the train of coming. Don't need no ticket, you just get on board. All you need is faith to hear the diesel coming. Don't need no baggage, you just thank the Lord.
Let's have a warm welcome for the MIT Gospel Choir. contacted sometime during the summer of my uh, preceding my freshman year by a uh, student at MIT, uh, Georgette Redman, uh, who was also from Ohio, uh, Toledo, Ohio. And she called to uh, contact me and, and 
uh, we shared some information um, about uh, our interest, mutual interest in singing. I was elated uh, to find out that there was uh, such an organization, um, but it turned out to be extremely important to me. Later that same summer, um, I tragically lost my younger brother, um, and uh, the choir was a huge part of the support uh, that I received uh, while uh, grieving, but also needing to maintain my studies and maintain, uh, most importantly, my faith. I think we impacted MIT and the community by uh, demonstrating uh, our faith, adding a, uh, a different perspective to the faith community um, at uh, MIT uh, from an African-American perspective, a, a, uh, an artistic perspective as well. How did I come to participate in the MIT Gospel Choir? Well, I had a couple friends approach me and one at a time, they were like, Sean, would you like to join a gospel choir? And I said, I'm Catholic. We don't really do gospel choirs. Um, I'm not sure. I'm already in the tech Catholic community. Didn't know if it would be a, a uh, conflict of interest. And thirdly, I really can't sing. And one by one, they each said that those were not issues. They were not conflicts. And I said, I gave it a try. And I'm glad they persisted because I really enjoy it. It was great to see so many people from different walks of life, from the North, the South, from the urban settings, the rural settings, uh, different denominations get together and just praise the Lord together. Um, the experience was great, especially in a very high stress um, environment. It was always time well spent uh, when I went to the practices uh, with the MIT Gospel Choir. One day I invited my parents and my brother down to see us perform. It was the first time we had a full band. We had a couple of guitarists, organists, um, and I didn't tell them that I was gonna be conducting a couple songs at the choir. It turned out really well, totally surprised them. I think uh, my brother even asked if I had switched uh, religions, <laughs> which I didn't. But um, it was, you know, very memorable, and I'm glad they came. Hi, I'm Cheryl Gill. I joined the MIT Gospel Choir in the fall of 1988, which was my freshman year. I was happy to join the choir because it was a continuation of my experiences in church and community choir since my youth. I really appreciated the fellowship time with the Gospel Choir. We encouraged each other as we practiced songs in rehearsal, and I count several lifelong friendships among the choir members. 
Our choir engagements were also an outreach ministry. I recall singing at college Sundays at the Massachusetts Avenue Baptist Church in Cambridge and other area colleges. But I think my favorite memory was the spring 1989 concert with Candace Buckner singing God Is to a large audience in Kresge Auditorium. Our concerts gave us an opportunity to reach people who didn't come from a faith tradition. Thank you for taking the time to share in this inaugural special presentation by the MIT Gospel Choir alums during the holiday season of 2022. We hope that you found it enriching, encouraging, and even exciting as we've revealed just a glimpse of the history of over a half a century that this organization has been offering songs of hope and help and healing to a hurting world. The MIT Gospel Choir is a witness of what has been a significant part of our life-changing experiences while engaged in our academic studies at MIT. As you've just heard and experienced in the music, testimonials, and songs of just a few of the alums in our group, you can tell that this organization has been a blessing to many, not just those in the MIT community, but also across the greater Boston, Cambridge area, and even the eastern coast of the United States. We are grateful to have made a difference in the lives of the people whom we've touched through song and witness and our service to our community. And we'd like to give thanks to those who have taken the time, such as yourself, to hear our voices speak to the value of the relationships and the fellowship that we've experienced in our faith journeys. Many have passed our way and still have very fond memories of the bonds and lifelong relationships that were fostered through the MIT Gospel Choir as it grew and developed over the years. There is much more to come as we look forward to presenting more of the joyful, and revealing ways that the MIT Gospel Choir has impacted the communities of MIT, Boston, Cambridge, and the East Coast. Stay tuned for our 2023 series of presentations that will be offered through the activities of the Black Alumni of MIT, also known as BAMIT, and the MIT Alumni Association. It's an exciting time for a reunion for our choir, and we invite you to be a special part of it. If you would like more information, you can contact May White Wesson at maywesson at aol.com. That's spelled M-A-E-W-E-S-S-O-N at aol.com. Or you can also contact Samuel Nixon Jr. at snixonj2 at aol.com. That's spelled S-N-I-X-O-N. J, the number two, at AOL.com. We will also be releasing announcements through the BAMIT and MIT alumni networks over the course of 2023. 
On behalf of the MIT Gospel Choir alums, we hope you have a great rest of your 2022 holiday experience as you reflect with us on the songs and the testimonies you've heard. We look forward to you joining us again in 2023. Blessings to you and your family in this holy season. This has been a production of the MIT Gospel Choir alums. Ticket, you just get on board. All you need is.